Hi, it's Cammie with Throw Like a Girl TV, the gender equality channel here on YouTube. What I'm thinking about today is socialization and socialization, how we bring up our girls and our boys is so critical to what kind of people they become, how they feel about themselves, how they feel about what they can accomplish, how they see the trajectory of their life going, what they believe in. And yet I don't think anybody's talking about this because there's things like, okay, it takes a village, right? It takes a village to raise a child. Awesome. So what's the village saying to the child, right? Because they might be getting a lot of different messages, which could be good. Um, but they also might be getting the same message over and over again. And unfortunately, the message that I see happening over and over again is that girls are less than boys. Now, you may not say that outright, but there are a few really telling things that I've discovered that really make this true. And we can change it, but we can't change it if we're not aware of it because we're part of it. We're part of that village. And we repeat the things that our mother said to us and our teachers and the school nurses and those sort of authority figures. And, and they have repeated what was said to them by their, you know, our grandparents and so forth and so on. So it, it stretches back generations. I'm not saying that my mom was a bad mom. My mom was a great mom, but just like you probably feel that way about your mom. But I think things were probably said or done or subtly implied that this, that there are things that girls do and things that girls don't do. And I really don't think that boys get those same messages. Now, what we're talking about here on this channel a lot of times is sports, specifically baseball. So what happens when a girl goes on the baseball field? Most of the time, she's been playing right alongside the same boys on her team since they started in t-ball at like age five. So the boys themselves aren't thinking this is weird. The girl's not thinking this is weird, but when these messages get sent to them that are telling them that girls aren't supposed to be there because society says, then that's when you start having these undercurrents of, of self-doubt and loss of confidence and affecting self-esteem and just outright sexism and sometimes even misogyny. There was a case last summer where coaches conspired, whether they thought they were joking or being funny or not, conspired to get the young woman out of the league who was 11 years old by saying, maybe we should bean her in the head so she'll quit. That's misogyny, folks, <laughs> right then and there. <laughs> if you're willing to commit a crime, commit assault on a young child because you don't think she should be playing baseball on your team, you have a serious problem. And it's not a joke. And it wouldn't have been funny even if it was a joke. Not okay. Now, obviously, not every young woman who wants to play baseball is faced with this sort of thing. And in this case, it's particularly awesome because that young woman was reached out to by, normal, by several girls teams, girls baseball teams, like the Boston Slammers and the DC Force, and they said, hey, come play with us. That is beautiful. <laughs> and that's how we change the world. We change the world for that one girl because she now knows that she's welcome and she's wanted and she's accepted, which she should always have felt. But these chuckleheads decided that she shouldn't feel that way. She doesn't get to feel that way because she's a girl and she's intruding or she's distracting or she's interfering or she's somehow not supposed to be taking up space on a baseball field. That is misogyny. It's patriarchy, it's sexism, it's discrimination, it's gender bias, it's everything that is wrong with society. Hmm. Yes, I'm a little emotional and hopefully you are too because <laughs> this kind of thing should not be happening in the United States of America, in the state of New Hampshire in 2018. We should be done with this by now, but we're not. It's still there. So there was a study done by Sports Illustrated. I think it was Sports Illustrated, uh, or maybe it was published in Sports Illustrated, something like that. Um, I'll try to find the link and put it on this video. 
that uh, took mothers, and I believe they were three-year-old, uh, three-month-old infants, and they took these mothers of boy babies and mothers of girl babies, and they asked them to estimate um, what their baby was capable of. So how fast can your baby crawl from this side of the room to that side of the room? How fast um, are they going to be able to go up and over this slide? Would they be able to crawl? Maybe they're not three months old. I don't really know much about babies. Maybe they were six months old. The point is, across the board, women, mothers, rated their girl babies 30% less capable than their boy babies. So mothers are doing this to their girls from birth. We feel like we have to protect them. We feel like they need to be um, coddled more. Like it's okay for a boy to get a little rough and tumble and fall down and hurt himself. But if a girl does it, we, you know, you know, we do this from the beginning of time that we rate girls less capable. And this is a problem because all girls, well, hopefully all girls <laughs> grow up and become women and they carry that baggage. They carry that baggage along. And on the other side of things, boys are being told that they're better all the time and that they're more capable and they're strong and they're brave and they're bold and they have a birthright to everything in this world. Where does that leave the girls? Where's the girl's birthright? <laughs> right? It's a big question. So this is what we're really talking about. Yes, we're talking about equality on the baseball field and we're talking about equal rights and we're talking about Title IX, but we're really talking about the systemic gender bias that is so ingrained that we don't realize that we are passing it on ourselves and that it affects ourselves. Um, I was having a conversation the other day uh, with a woman who's studying to be a life coach. And she had this really interesting revelation. She was a very slight, sort of a gymnast type person, maybe about five, six, probably a hundred and something pounds or whatever. So it's just a, a smaller person than I am because I'm almost 5'11 and have this athletic build with a few extra uh, winter pounds on me, even though it's October. Um, she was saying that she had noticed that every time there was some sort of competition for space uh, that, that happens in day-to-day in -day life, like walking down a hallway or in the grocery store or someplace where she felt that she needed to duck out of the way and make room for a man. And since she mentioned it to me, I've looked at my own behavior and I realize I do exactly the same thing. If I'm coming down you know, a hallway or coming out of an elevator, I have every right to walk out of that elevator. I'm not doing anything that, that I shouldn't be doing, and yet I will duck my head, I will get to the side, I will speed up my step, and I will say sorry. Why do I do that? Me being on the elevator has affected this man's life in no way, and he is not looking at me like, get out of my way. It's something that's in my brain that makes me feel like I should not be taking up this space, that I'm inconvenient somehow. And this is messed up, people, <laughs> because again, we shouldn't be feeling this way. We hold up half the sky. Men hold up the other half of the sky. If we all work together, then the sky stays up there, which is what everyone wants. And yet we're like, oh, sorry. Sorry that I'm, I'm in this space. Sorry that, that I'm in front of you in the grocery line. Sorry that you know, you're coming down the hallway and you have your arms full and I have my arms full and oh, sorry, right? Think about it, do, do you do this? You probably do. Because somewhere along the line, we were given messages that we're not supposed to take up equal space. So, this is an experiment if you feel like trying it. Don't yield your space. I'm not saying be rude, I'm not saying be belligerent, I'm not saying elbow somebody out of the way. Just don't yield. Don't say I'm sorry for walking down the hallway or coming out of an elevator and see what happens. What I've noticed and what my friend noticed, MJ, is that men are confused. 
they're like, I, I don't understand why this woman is still walking towards me. Like, why didn't she get out of the way? Because that's what women do. It's very subtle, but it's really important. And I think that if you just, you know, give it a try, you, you might learn some stuff. You might learn, obviously, more about you and than I'm talking about, because I'm talking about me, but women in general. And I think this is the same kind of thing that that just happens in general in society. It's why we don't ask for equal pay. It's why we don't ask for raises. It's why we apologize when our kids are sick and we have to miss work. It's why we're always like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And of course there's a backlash sometimes when you don't say you're sorry and someone's expecting you to say that, they may say something nasty. Um, but that's on them. It's not on you. You are not doing anything that you are not supposed to be doing. You have the right to every space that you are occupying on this planet, just like every other human being does, whether it's on the baseball field or it's in the boardroom. And once we start owning that and just, like I said, making these subtle changes, just like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good here. This is, this is my space. I don't need to do this. I can be here. And that's where I'm supposed to be. I deserve to be here. These are thoughts that are in my mind. And I thought that people might enjoy thinking about them as well. So please comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe, perhaps share this video with somebody that you would like to think about these concepts as well. And let's really get a conversation going about why it is that we as women do not take up our rightful space. All right, thank you so much. Have an awesome day.